made extensive notes. Got it. Are you recording this, Alison? I am recording. Do I have your consent? You have my consent. Delightful. May the this recording is going begin. on the interweb. Oh, oh my people God. People are going to hear it. <laughs> cool. What are we talking about? So today we are talking about um, authenticity, being one's authentic self. Hmm. What is it? Um, why would we want to be our authentic selves? Yep. And what gets in the way? Beautiful. Do so, you have a, I'm annoyed with the word authentic. Are you? Mm -hmm. Like if I saw there was why? a podcast on authenticity, I probably wouldn't listen to it. Oh, okay. I think we've How like come? <laughs> beaten this drum around authenticity so hard it's kind of like the leadership drum and the transformation drum mm. where people mm. are like I have a new thought I'm transformed and you're like oh my god I can't and then everyone thinks leadership is you know everybody's an expert on leadership everybody's an expert on authenticity everybody so mm. maybe I'm in a real crap mood or I didn't sleep well but in general I would not well, we know you're tired <laughs> I'm also tired okay so I just Can want to start with you... that. Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> um, so two things. I think you possibly hear this word a lot. You, me, people in, uh, in our line of work yeah. possibly hear this word more than, than just someone, I don't know, who's Thank an accountant. You. I've made that up. I've no idea never what talk about it, ever. Never. No idea what accountant. Now, if there is an accountant I know an listening. Accountant. <laughs> yeah. Please put in the comments. Yeah, I am going to actually contact my friend who's an accountant and ask them if this is something that they think about ever. But my point being, all of the algorithms on everything and everything you read and everything that you're interested in is going to have a flavor of that in it yeah. because of the work that you do in the world, because of the stuff that you get up to and the stuff you're interested in. Yeah. So that's why you may have a personal <laughs> to yeah. that word. Yeah. My second thing is, can you put that down for this conversation or do we need to change the topic? I would like to talk about cookies. Rabbits. Yeah, yeah. Um, I absolutely can. And when we talk about authenticity and not use the word, we talk about the concept and like why it's important and what it does for us, then I get excited. So okay. I can put it down and I have let it go. Just the process of me saying it into the space has let it has been released. <laughs> great. I love that when I texted you yesterday, yesterday and said, how about authenticity? You were like, great. And today you're like, <clears throat> I hate I it. I don't like that word. <laughs> That's so, <laughs> so funny. True. Um, okay. So shall I have a stab at saying what I think it means? I would love to hear your definition. Oh. Let's define so, it. Yeah, very simply, I would say it is where all the pieces of myself line up. So for anyone who's listening and can't see, I'm doing little hand gestures to show. So it would be, you know, my beliefs, my thoughts, my words, my actions, um, my right. behaviors, the, you know, my presence, my being, the way I show up in the world would all be in alignment. Um, oh, and the other expression, and I would therefore not be out of integrity with myself. I find being out of integrity is the expression that gets on my nerves and makes me annoyed. Love Blah, I'll put let's that Let's all down. be annoyed. Yes, let's all be annoyed today. So that's what I would have it mean. Okay. What do you want, what do you want to add? I have to agree with all of that have to because it's all mm. uh well because it's put and succinct and it was cool. said with a with an accent that makes it sound even smarter than it is i think i would seem a lot smarter if i spoke like you just so you know <laughs> i did tell you about my client who listened to the podcast he's very wisconsin born and raised mm. and was like mm. i can't understand that other lady and i thought that was so cute <laughs> Because he can understand my accent, but yours, he was like, what? 
What's she what saying? What's she saying? Yeah. That's and so your funny. accent like feels like music. Like I love it. And then when you say stuff to me, it sounds so smart. You could just like call mm. me a pile of shit and I'd be like, mm, like even when you so say smart. swear words, it sounds really nice. Mm. But it is alarming that that chap cannot understand what I'm saying. <laughs> we might That's have so a demographic funny. that is unavailable to us because of the accent, so which is funny. Funny. It's so Hilarious. good. All right, we'll work on him. So what, how would I add to that? Uh, I wrote down some mm. notes here and now I can't read them. Um, Your mm. eyes, Ellie. Yes, darling, accept it. Okay, mm. so one of the, the things about authenticity is that um, it's like not something that I just have to like, that I just have it, like I can just be myself, I wish. I wish that's what it was because authenticity is like bringing your true self to the table and like aligning all your parts mm. and not hiding or mm. you know masking anything. It's just like yeah. accepting all of who I am and then showing up that way. And it's mm. just so lovely. It's a beautiful concept in reality. Mm. I think authenticity is a choice. It's a practice. It's, intentionally in the moment choosing what I will and will not show. Mm. That's getting into the how oh, to be crap. authentic self. Have no, it's fine. That, no, because yeah. we don't have the how of it. I, I, I didn't put that down as a, as a place to look. Okay. Um, but that's my feeling that you're describing how, like how I be aligned and my true self yeah. is I choose it. I don't know. Well, Do you see it little, like that? A little bit. Yes, it is the how. And it is also like mm. the distinction of, okay, like authenticity is bringing your true self forward. Mm. It's, it's not just, it's choosing. Like tennis is hitting a ball over a net. That's also mm. how we play tennis, but that's what tennis is. It's like, mm. so for me, it is Good both. Point. It's the definition and how, because I, I think so many of us are like, I wish I could be more authentic. Mm. And, and it's like, I wish I had big muscles. Okay, well then you've got to go and like, you've got to go and lift the heavy weight. You've got to go choose to have big muscles by doing the work that is required to do that. And authenticity isn't something that you just have. It's something mm. that you choose and you can't choose it if you don't practice it. Like, I think I'm muddying the waters. No, okay. I, I don't. I think I think we're 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 trucking along. I mean, I think we're born our authentic selves. Absolutely, a baby isn't hiding anything. No, it's all it's all there. It's all out there. It's all available. They're, they're you know they're expressing themselves fully, mm. and then the process of socialization happens. Yeah. The process of adopting and learning about our culture happens. Um, and then, and then we perhaps then show up less authentically because mm -hmm. it's frowned upon or it's inconvenient for you to be your authentic self now at grandma's. Could you just pipe down, not right. be quite so jolly or right. radiant or loud? Right. Um, so why would we... Yeah. Taking on board your your Why bother? idea, yeah, your idea of choice. Why would we bother? And we've kind of had a look, and we will look later at sort of like what gets in the way. Mm -hmm. um, I don't mind which way when we do it, whether we look at you know why we would bother because that feels like the vision piece to me. Like why would I be? Why are we talking about this? Me? Yeah, why yeah. would I want to be who I was when I was born? You know, <laughs> why yes. would I want to be that? Yeah, let's do so, that. Yeah. Okay, great. So why would we bother? So um, I have a couple of, of places to look. The first is I think a lot of my self-sabotage lies in my inability to like bring my full self forward. Mm -hmm. So if I want to like get rid of all the sabotaging behaviors that I have, that's one reason why I might want to look at this being authentic and bringing myself forward. Cause it's convoluted how I get there. 
but mm. I, I mean, give me five minutes and I can draw you a map like of how of all the places that I'm doing stuff that I really don't want to do or I'm getting in my own way has something to do with like not honoring my myself, my desires, mm. my needs. Um, I was listening to a podcast and they were saying, um, we explore all these parts of ourselves because like it's easy to look at the parts of ourselves that we're really good at. What's hard is the parts that we hide even from ourselves. And why would we bother? Because that's how we reach our potential. That's how it's like an unlived life is the word that they used. That if, if we don't explore all the parts of ourselves, which is how we get to know who we are and then bringing that forward. It's an unlived life. And that to me was like, oh, that is like a little heartbreaking to even say those words together and unlived. And you and I were speaking about our mothers and like how much unlived life in their eighties they're sitting in. And I don't, I don't want that. So for me, the what for, you know, do any of this is like, I, I want to know what I'm capable of. <laughs> Um, and let's see if there's it anything It sounds else. like, oh. if, um, well, do you mind if I leap in? You bet. Um, I was sort of looking at, looking at personal freedom mm -hmm. and, and also comfort. And I know for myself that in the pursuit of being my authentic self more, you know, that is something I'm pursuing, something I'm practicing, something I'm working on, something I'm allowing, all of the words, um, that there is discomfort in that because it means I need to um, potentially say or do differently to how I have done for a long old time, you yeah. know. Um, but what is available for me, like why I would bother to go through that discomfort, why I would bother to practice doing it differently, being my, my real and truer self, is because of the freedom I feel. And um, I feel less anxious. I feel less restrained and constrained. Um, I feel that there is actually less stress in my life when I'm able to show up as who I am in the moment. Yes. So there is that kind of like who I am in the moment and then it's tied into the consistent threads of who I am as a person, who yeah. I am as a being. Yes. So for me, a lot of it is about personal freedom and the quality and experience of life that I have when I am, when I allow myself to show up like that. Mm -hmm. um, the word allowing ties back to your word choosing. So yeah. I'm allowing that and to your, you know, your example of being in the gym, I am practicing it. Yeah, right. And why bother? Because there's freedom. Mm. I think it's also possible in my own life, I see how I can take on so much more responsibility without feeling like, ah, uh, like you said, stress. I don't feel so pressured. I feel confident that I can handle more. So maybe there's something around like expanding all of the things I can be with. Mm. I mean, sometimes life throws stuff at us and we're forced to be with things, death, uh, difficulty, breakups, right? Like whatever life is going to happen. And we're part of this is just going to like come to us and we, we're going to be like, mm. okay, great. And being able to, to um, let me see if I can get my words right here. It is, it is um, a beautiful experience to be able to expand all of the things that I can be with intentionally. Yeah. I have a small example of that. If yeah. I can stick it in. Let's do um, it. Stick it in may not now be the best use of words when I come up with the example but I was delivering a workshop to um, a group of young people um, and the workshop was about pornography yes and I had not delivered that workshop before 
when you say you're delivering a workshop on pornography to young people, you might want to caveat that, that like, we're talking about the impacts of like, Oh yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yes. It was, uh, <laughs> wasn't a how to. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. It was um, the impact of pornography. Thank you, Ali. Can you. we edit this? <laughs> yes, it was a, no, we can't. We don't, I don't know, know how. We don't have the technology <laughs> yet, <laughs> if only. <laughs> um, yeah, it was the impact of pornography on, um, you know, young adults' yes. um, perception of, of, you know, sexual relationships. Right. Thank you for that clarifying question and thank you for talking to young people about this you're Continue. very welcome you're very welcome <laughs> but the the moment um that I opened my mouth so I'd never you know I'd run through the slides and sort of you know kind of like had an idea of what I was doing obviously I was in the room to deliver this thing I opened my mouth and nothing came out from oh. fear I've never watched pornography in my life. So I was talking about a subject I knew nothing about. Well, I certainly had no personal experience of. Um, and whatever, just fear came up. Anxiety came up. And I couldn't speak. And my heart was, you know, <laughs> in my jumper. Um, and, um, and I thought, oh, okay. Um, and what I did was I was authentic in that moment. So I um, I walked over and opened the window and I spoke to the young people in the room and said, oh, my heart is racing at 100 miles an hour. I'm nervous about delivering this to you. Um, I don't remember all the things I said, but, you know, I said a few things. And by sharing the truth of what was happening for me, I, my nervous system calmed down. Mm -hmm. I was able to breathe without having to mask that I needed a few calming breaths. I didn't need to mask what was happening. I didn't need to uh, speak in a weird, constricted, con yes. you know, restrained, constrained voice. I was able to just be in the moment, yeah. share the truth of what was happening. Yeah, There was some, you know, just faces looking back at me slightly puzzled you know yeah. um I think I may have said does that ever happen to you you know blank nobody was like oh yeah I love <laughs> I'm constantly feeling <laughs> like that so you know yeah it just you know I didn't get any reaction but that was fine and I just I wasn't having to mask is the point Ali I was able to yeah. be with what was really happening like you said earlier in the conversation yeah that you're able to expand what you're able to be with yeah in, and, and, you know, including discomfort, including the things that don't work and the things that aren't running smoothly. That wasn't what I would call my finest moment, although weirdly, maybe it was because I modeled to a group of young adults okay. how to be in the moment with anxiety. Yeah. Give myself a couple of breaths. And I went on, not tooting my own trumpet, but I went on to smash the 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 delivery of the of the you know the workshop and the presentation mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. because I then just calmed right down. Yeah. And it yeah. was fun and it was interactive and it was really enjoyable and lots of hands up and you know, and it was just really, really good. And I really enjoyed myself. Um and I think I wouldn't have had that experience if I had tried to mask what was happening and sort of struggle through the reality. <laughs> yeah. I just shared the reality and took the breaths that I needed. So yeah. that feels like a real life example of why I would bother to be authentic. What yeah. was really happening in my body, I shared with my mouth and shared with the room. Took what I needed yeah. and proceeded. And what I love about that story is the sky didn't fall, the world didn't mm -hmm. end. A lot of times the stories that we tell ourselves about like, God, do I say to everybody right now that I'm really nervous and I just need to catch my breath? Mm -hmm. Or do I just keep pushing through? Yes. I have a similar story, if it serves, maybe two stories would help people to see. And then we yeah, can yeah. keep talking about stories as we move mm -hmm. forward. Mine is mm -hmm. from the retreat when ah. I allowed myself, so I was in a precarious position. I was 
we were whitewater rafting and we, our boat, our raft got pinned against a rock. It was a pretty intense position to be in because like the, the water was moving pretty quickly and um, like, anyways, so it was intense. It was unsafe to say the least. Like I could have probably hurt myself, broken a bone, something if I gotten carried away. So we're like in the raft, we're trying to help get the raft loose. There were other guides that showed up to try to get it loose. And as I looked at the faces of everybody around, of the people in other rafts looking at us, like being trapped and pinned against this stone, there was a lot of fear. And like even one girl, I looked over and she was had her hands over her mouth and she was mm. looking at me. And I was like, mm. huh. And the, the moment um, that I'm going to share is that I never felt fear. I didn't have a conscious feeling of fear. If mm. you were to measure all of my body, I was yeah, probably yeah. completely dysregulated. My heart rate, my blood pressure, cortisol, mm. adrenaline, it was all over the map. I'm sure of it. But in mm. my conscious mind, I was mm. not scared. This is mm. not a big deal. I am fine. I can do it. And then um, at one point, <laughs> as you know, in whitewater rafting, a lot of times people can just pick you up by your, your yeah, um, you. life jacket. Yeah. And yeah. they'll whip you around. They can put you in the boat. They can take you out of the boat. They can do all the things. And you're just yeah. kind of like this rag doll. Yeah. So I get whipped into the boat. This person gets whipped in beside me because the boat's starting to come loose. So he's trying to get us back into the raft as quickly as possible. And I get it. So I'm, you know, getting back in the raft, and I'm sitting there and the guy gets whipped in next to me. And I grabbed his, like, it was almost like a reaction. I grabbed his coat to make sure he was like safe next to me. I don't really know this guy, right? And I look at him in that moment and I consciously said, will you put your arm around me for a second? Yeah. And that in itself was an act of authenticity because I finally allowed myself to feel unsafe. Mm. And I allowed the fear and the, the I was scared but I don't ever let that come up. And, and what the result of that was like in that moment was this beautiful, like soothing, like he had his arm around me. I had my arm around him mm -hmm. and I felt tight and I felt held. And I was like, okay, no matter what happens, like the two of us will go floating down the river, breaking bones together. Right. I'm not going to be alone mm -hmm. as I, but it was this, um, I, I got a need met. And I don't allow that need to ever surface. I never yeah. allow myself to feel unsafe, to state such a thing. Mm. I'm fine. I'm always fine. And that has been, um, that has, that, that experience shifted a ton of stuff for me. Yes. Well, I, yeah, go ahead. No, you go. You, I it. breathed and End you of story. stopped. I'm good. Okay. <laughs> I apologize. No that worries. Breath, that inward breath. I did it again. No breathing. Stop breathing, Stop Mia. Stop breathing. Heavens above. Breathing on a podcast. Yeah, it sounds like by really asking, you know, being real in that moment. Yes. And I can sort of see how we suppress fear in stressful situations in order to get through right and then when you were safer because you were back that in is. the raft yeah. um you allowed yourself to ask for what you really needed which was a sense of security a, a hug. hug yeah a hug yeah um yeah and um and I know how that has opened other things up for you going forward to yeah. um to allow yourself to recognize the truth of when you need something, because you are brilliant at not needing anything. You're very low maintenance. Below, um, I will assert I'm the lowest maintenance. Yes. I yeah. Yeah. And it's kind of like that sort of goes on to like, you know, I will like that leads to again why would it matter because as a low maintenance friend mm. I need to check in or I choose to check in with you to make sure and I check in with myself yeah. that you're not coming from that 
wrong words, but inauthentic, if I just use right. that word for a yeah. moment, yeah. inauthentic place of like, yes. I'm fine, I don't need anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, That sort of automatic place yeah. that I actually check in with you. Now, do, is that actually yeah. true? Yes. You know, um, and that's, it's... well, that's the practice of it mm. because it's so automatic that I most of the time actually believe that I am fine because I'll tell you that woman who had her hands over her mouth and her eyes are as big and she looked at me and she mouthed and she did this. She's like, are you okay? She was way off in the distance. She caught my eyes. She said, are you okay? Mm -hmm. And I was like, fucking got this. It's just water. We're going to be fine. Yeah. Which is not true if you were to like, you know, again, like take that off the table. This is super intense. I don't like that I am standing in now in the rapids behind a rock that is slightly moving. I'm like, I don't, this feels real. I got stupid paddles, like what? toss yeah. those off. Like, I just want to like float down and get to the side and like start over again, right? This just yeah. felt awful. We couldn't get the boat off without two more people, two more guides. Mm. Like mm. the whole thing was just like, this is dangerous. And there was a part of me that was like, this felt a little irresponsible of our guide, but I don't let myself ever feel any of that. Mm. I wanted to help. I wanted to like be right. I'm Mm. the golden retriever. It's all fine. Yeah. Yeah. Super accommodating. And, um, you know, that sort of leads into, we can move backwards and forwards, but sort of what gets in the way then of us being our, our authentic self. And we've sort of pinpointed in in both of those stories but in your in your experience it's sort of like well I don't want to be kind of like you know inconvenient to anyone I'll just right. keep smiling and you know yeah I'm they okay like, I was caretaking her I'm yes. standing in the water and I'm trying to yeah. make her feel better yeah yes yeah, yeah. and you know, I, I'm trying to think now in the other story of, you know, standing in front of a group of people where you're meant to be, I was the professional, you yes. know, I was the one wearing the lanyard, I was <laughs> older than them, I was in front of them, you know, I'm the professional who is going to talk to you about this thing, and then to just not be that, Yeah. yes, you know, what gets in the way is, you know, looking like an idiot, um, yeah. being embarrassed, yep. um, not feeling that I am the professional that I am, you know, yes. meant to be or being, you know, whatever presented as, you know, with the lanyard yeah. that says that I'm the person, you know, in the little briefcase and kind of like I'm the person <laughs> who knows the thing. And then you're just like, uh, 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 uh. Yeah. yeah, some embarrassment, fear, yeah, get in the way. Yes. What else gets in the way? Um, it seems to me where I am in my like exploration in life mm-hmm. is um, most of the things that get in my way are the parts of myself that I had to like hide or like put away or, you know, mm-hmm. put in a drawer so that I could get my needs met as a young person. So if we're talking about this example again, there's all parts, like we could go on for hours, but if we talk about safety, I couldn't, um, there was a part of myself as a very young person growing up in a violent home that if I allowed myself to feel, um, it's not to feel, to acknowledge how unsafe I actually was, I think I would have lived in constant terror. So Mm -hmm. we're brilliant, right? Humans are absolutely brilliant. So as a small person, I think, I don't know, seems like what I did is that I said, okay, like that unsafe, like knowing truly that I am unsafe, I'm just going to like put that away. I'm never, ever going to let myself be with that because if I did, I think I would have like you know, curled up in a little ball, never come out of the closet. Um, And so for all the reasons, which is what you would tell a four-year-old growing up in a violent home, like, you're fine. You're probably fine. Like, don't live in constant state of terror. Just kind of take that fear and put it away. So then as I grow up, I just, I have that as a part of me. 
So I, I think that what, what gets in our way are like making sure that our needs can get met and mm. to recognize that I was unsafe and I was in a, in a place that like where my, my caregivers couldn't keep me safe. I had to show up a different way. Mm. And then you just do that for long enough and it just becomes part of like who I am. Now my identity is I'm the toughest, grittiest, strongest, the ist you'll ever meet. Mm. I can stand yeah. in whitewater rapids in a very unsafe and I can make you feel safe, bitch. Like I got yeah, this. Yeah. yeah. So it's mm. like what gets in the way is like the identity that I created as a very, very young person that worked really well for me. It just like carried through and we didn't check it. Yeah. I didn't check back in with it. And even for me to ask for that man to put his arm around me for a second felt like a massive admission of weakness like i felt so weak as soon as he put his arm around me i was like oh it feels so good oh my god like there was the other part of me i was like what are you doing that's weak mm. you're the strong one what are you doing letting this person put his arm around you mm. so yeah like, so one of the things that potentially gets in the way is the deconstruction of identity yeah, because we build up an identity of who we are. Yeah, um, you know, and there was sort of like a putting on the robe with the lanyard and the briefcase in yes. the in the example of delivering a workshop or a presentation. We we don the identity in that situation of yes. professional. Yeah. Yep. Doing this thing. Yes. Um, and that gets in the way of us being who we really are. Yeah. Um, and when we're able to, um, we're sort of going back to sort of like the vision piece, like why would I bother? But when we're able to be in that role of, you know, imparter of, you know, wisdom as, as someone who's presenting or leading something or able to work with people from that role of, of identity, professional identity with a lanyard and a suitcase or briefcase or whatever, um, when we're able to bring our real self um, to the table, what do I think is available when we bring our real self to the table? Well, for me in that moment, it was personal freedom, but I'm wondering what's received on the other end. And I think we've already covered this, which is, it. yeah, it goes back to that thing you said of being able to be with more. So mm. what what was potentially imparted to others, I seem to have gone to the other side of what was shared, was that it's possible to be the professional who's donned the robe of professionalism with the lanyard and the briefcase, and they are able to be with their fear and anxiety. I got, and I got. Go, go. I've in, got a way to land this. Go. When you, <laughs> Thanks, when, I'm like, way. I got you. Way. I got you. Here yeah. we go. Yeah. When um, the, the students in that classroom could connect with you. When we put on our robe and our bow tie and our briefcase and we show up with the lanyard, we say lanyard in this country. And I, can I just say, of course, I always wear a bow tie. Of course, I can see you. Actually, you just wear always. awesome earrings. Beautiful, feathery. Um, show up with your feather earrings and a big ass yes. bow tie. Massive spotted bow tie. Yeah. <laughs> that, as soon as you said, oh, my heart's racing. Mm, I'm really nervous. Boom. While teenagers are not real great at like giving themselves away, right? They are really in the throes of inauthentic inauthenticity, right? That's when what our peers think of us like developmentally is so important. So nobody in that room is going to be like, I feel like that too sometimes, Miss Mia. They would just be like, oh, <laughs> shit. But, and they're watching you because they're like, this mm. lady just literally, like, look at her breathing in front of us and opening up a window. What the hell? But I guarantee you, those people were like, ooh, but I'm with her. Like, mm. we know when you're showing up and you're tight in your throat and you're trying to, like, operate over the top of your yes. fear and nervousness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can see it. Like, we, yes. we're really good at pulling that out with each other. I know when somebody, I know when I'm at the grocery store and somebody in management has told that checker to ask me about what I'm doing this afternoon to try to connect with me. I know they don't care. So what are you doing this afternoon? I'm like, I don't. 
just bring my stuff up. I think you're a nice person, but like, I know you don't care about what I'm doing this afternoon. So let's not do that. That's inauthentic. It's gross. It's disconnecting. It's repelling. As mm. soon as you said, oh, my heart is racing. I guarantee you had everybody. Mm. I'm not going to guarantee. So I don't really know. But no, I mean, it went really, really well. And I felt I flew with it. I felt really relaxed and comfortable with it and able to play yeah. because I didn't have to pretend. The impact so on your released. audience. Well, and mm. the impact on your audience was that they wanted, they were like willing to play. Once I know that mm. we're connected, I'm going to play with you. Mm. So mm. I bet that the energy in the room changed too for everybody sitting in that room. Yeah, I mean, it went really, really well. I was surprised at how well it went, considering how it started with me, like, unable to get words out of my mouth. Um, side note, I love it when the um, cashier asks me about my day. Come on. Love, they don't care, that. Mia. I don't care whether they care. I love that little, little dance. Are you the one that told them to ask me? Are you the one that I, has gone to all I, the management and yeah, said? I, I think it's lovely. I think poo-pooing it is well i've got opinions I've got opinions about that ali bobs um so so what gets in the way fear shame embarrassment yep. um our internal working model the map that we put together as children like oh in order to survive and be safe and get my needs met food shelter the odd hug i need to dampen myself down or yes. I'm really shy but I need to show mm -hmm. up as kind of like entertaining whatever whatever we we came up with yeah in order to get through and then if it's unexamined yeah we just run on those um internal working models those default patterns for the rest of our lives and to some level are potentially masking hiding people pleasing withholding holding yeah. back yeah who we really are and I think the risks can be when we show up as who we you know there's a whole pile of other stuff that gets in there's social norms cultural norms yes you know family culture yes, yes. you know which will be specific and individual to each household although yep. there'll be you know broad brush strokes that are similar potentially with other households but um Oh, Where was were, I going with that? So now this good. is a thing. I was so good. This, oh my God, this do we have is to erase thing... this whole thing. Do we have to start all over? Stop recording. Oh, bums. Okay. Where was I going? You were talking Ow. about all the different ways. I think I'm having a I'm having a nervous breakdown on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> this could be are you having a stroke? I'm... I'm being really authentic because I don't, right I could try and pretend. I love you. And, right you were, and we're so connected right now. <laughs> I could try and pretend. I hope Tracy and Sherafat appreciate Sherifat this. Sherafat loves us. She is moment. unconditionally loving and accepting of our mm -hmm. podcast. Thank you, Sherafat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh. You say some stuff while okay. I remember where I was going. All right, going. so there were a couple of things that you were pointing at, and it was all of the things that also get in our way, right? Not only do we have to get our needs met as, as young children, and we figure mm. out how to do that very quickly for our own mm. survival, but then there's also the cultural, traditional, societal mm. things that then also get placed on us. Mm. So all of that kind of keeps, like, we just keep adding layers on top of all of the things that we are deep down mm. inside. I think I found where I was going to go with that. Right. There's a risk. So the risk is that we yes. upset yes. the apple cart yes. or the boat. Yes. We uh, upset the boat if we show up as who we really are, because over a period of time, all of these layers, mm -hmm. um, are sort of like embedded. We're not conscious of them. Everybody knows how to relate to us. We know how to relate to them. We know how to survive and get through certain situations. Why would we take the risk of telling the truth, of being who we really are? Yes. Crying. You know, I've cried in an interview, Ali. That's not what you're meant to do. That's not your best self. You're meant to take your best self to an interview. I took my authentic self. I was my authentic self in an interview. Yeah. Um, 
and and I I got the job. Now that, that I'm not recommending that you cry in interviews as a way of getting jobs. Can I just put what that you are recommending in? is being authentic. Yes, and sometimes authenticity is you having an emotion. Yeah, and it's risky because people will have opinions. Super risky particularly yes. people who know us well and just want us to run on the yes. default program. Yes. Like Allison, just be fine. Yeah. Just have, be fine. Have no needs. Just be fine. Yeah. Because yeah. how much easier is that? Super easy. Gabor Mate. Mm. I don't know what the quote is, but he says when connect humans have, have two basic needs. Um, it's like connection and authenticity. Right. And, and when they are both on the table, connection will always trump. So like the way I would write that mathematically is connection is greater than authenticity. So if connection is at risk, I'm going to hide myself, which is what I did my whole childhood. Yes. It's what we yes. all do in childhood. We are not because our parents suck and they've done it all wrong. I'm not blaming. What mm. I am saying is that society, the humans that take care of us, the humans in our world, in our world mm. in order for us to get our needs met in order for us to stay connected and part of the group mm -hmm. yes we learn how we must show up mm. and that means yes. probably taking parts of ourselves and being like oh that's not welcome yes here. in order to not be cast out right we cast out yes part of parts of ourselves yes. well put in, yeah well we finally got there Boom. It's okay. What? It's only <laughs> been 40, 43 minutes. We're fine. <laughs> um, that was a real low energy boom. Um, <laughs> but yes, we, you know, and we do that because the risk is being, a, a, you know, an outcast. Right. From right. family, yes. colleagues at work, society. So just stuff it all down, smother and stuff, mask how you yes. feel and truck on. Just yes. get on with it. Yeah. So I think of the, the example of the child who knows that they're homosexual mm. in a family where that is absolutely not okay. And how long some, some homosexual friends that I have, how long mm. they hid that and carried that around with them. I now have uh, young adult children and their friends who are homosexual mm. can be homosexual in my house because I'm mm. like, yeah, mm. it's welcomed here. All are mm. welcome. And then they have to go home and put back on their, their mask. And that's a lot. Like, that is such an essential part of who you are. Same with like my inability to allow myself mm. to feel unsafe. Mm. Like what an essential part of my human makeup. That's my entire brain. Like there's a whole part of my brain that is dedicated to safety. And I'm like, nope. Yeah, and there's some sort of um, maths that is going on, that's sort of working out like yep. risk evaluation. Yes. Is, what is the riskier thing to do? Is it, you know, and, and imagine the impact or what is the safest thing to do and the impact on the nervous system. Yeah. And, I, th you know, like that masking, we can get really good at it yeah. and feel disconnected even though we're doing all the right yep. things we can feel this in authenticity yes. like it just doesn't you know she says all the right things she does all the right things but something missing that I can't put my finger on yeah there's something yeah she's so, not fine mm. you know when I'm not fine yes you now have known yeah. me long enough where you're like okay yes I get that you're and, fine and yeah yeah and I'm and I'm I'm now able I'm wise to your habit of being yeah. fine so yeah. I can actually check in a second time and say well if if you were fine and mm -hmm. like yes and what would what would you do or say or... so this is the one thing that we haven't covered and I don't suggest that we do it now but there is a place where like the why the what for and all of that is is really in relationship that this is where it becomes really I would because of the person I am, it's really powerful for me that my relationships actually get better and there's more freedom inside of them because I can show up as my full self. So when I brought that safety 
breakthrough home with me with my husband mm -hmm. and I was mm -hmm. like you know this is kind of what I'm noticing um and here's some things that I want to practice like he was he was all in because our entire marriage 25 years plus I've known him for a long time before that he was like I want to protect you and you won't let me I want to open the pickle jar mm -hmm. but you're the strongest person in the room so you won't let me you know I I want to like I just want to do stuff for you and and I have created that as an impossibility inside our relationship because of all mm -hmm. my stuff so I think there's also where it it really becomes fulfilling and meaningful for me because of the kind of person I am is inside of my relationships. Like it's neat if I can go give content to a group of people, that's neat. But where yeah. it really like hits me square is mm. in my relationships. And I think, you know, it's a form of relationship giving content and you're talking, I mean, I'd written down better relationships yes. and I yes. think that is a really nice place to continue the conversation maybe on the next podcast, if you're willing. I'm always willing. I love, so are we going to do a part two? Is that what we're doing? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, let's do a part two about relationships, authentic relating, authentic, authentic relationships. relating. Being, yeah, being authentic Take a in note. relationships. So what is your takeaway from today's conversation, part one of the combo? <sighs> Let me settle in here and see what I think. Um, my takeaway is that life is a lot more fun when I can just let go of all the identities that I'm trying to put on, the personas I'm trying to adopt in just so that I can feel like I'm doing the thing. Like, sorry, let me land this again. Let me try again. Um, I don't wanna be performative anymore. That's my takeaway. That when I can be authentic, I'm not performing. And that's like, ugh, mm. so much easier. Well, and a lot riskier, but I like it. I like, I'm ready yes. to take that on more and more the older I get yes. too. It helps. Yeah. I think mine is similar that there's risk attached or, or, or discomfort attached to both. Yes. You know, yes, I could have like struggled through the, you know, the workshop with the like, oh, you know, constricted voice. Um, I plumped for the risk of sharing what was truly happening. And I had a more comfortable experience thereafter. So there's something for me about the ease of it. Yes. Yeah. And and the energy that I spend, like choosing where I want to spend it. I freed up energy when I told the truth about what was happening for me when I was authentic. Energy was freed up and I was able to really enjoy myself, um, really be in that moment. So that's my takeaway. Mm. Um, that there's risk attached to both, like you said, and it's where I choose. Yeah. To to play, where I choose yeah. to be. Mm. Cool. All right, lady. Part two, next Part time two round. coming up. Yeah, stay tuned. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Bye. Have a great rest of your day.